Oh, gracious, Mrs. Mingo, how you scared me. But, Miss Anson, what in the name of creation was you doing? Now it's my daily dozen. Only I can't do more than half a dozen now getting all tuckered out. But it's just wonderful. Just look. Look at what? Me. Don't you think my muscles are getting bigger? Why? Now wait a minute. Don't just go and say nice things make me feel good. Tell me the honest to goodness truth. That's what I want. Now, don't you think I'm getting stronger and more muscular? Now remember, tell me the truth. Well, to tell you the honest goodness truth, I think you're getting scrawnier. Now Matilda Mingle, you're the most uncomplimentary next door neighbor I ever had. If you can't say nothing else about me, don't say anything at all. Uh, all right, Miss Anson. I'll not say another word. But I don't think it's quite nice to have you talk that way when I drop you for a call. I don't care. If you don't like the way I talk, you can go home. I intend to, just as soon as I tell you about the Fergusons. Which Fergusons? Them that live on the other side of me. Oh, Henrietta and Abe. Miss Anson, there's trouble brewing in that house. Hmm. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if there's something besides trouble brewing, especially down in their basement. Tell me about it. Well, hmm. Well, maybe it ain't much to worry about. I wouldn't want it to get around that I said anything. Now, you know how I am, Mrs. Mingle. Well, come to me confidential like don't go no further. Well, I can look right in their set rooms in the evenings. And if they got a little light, of course. I always keep my lace curtains pretty tight together so they don't see how I'm looking. I wouldn't want them to... Mine, no. It wouldn't ever do to let them see you looking. It's an off road thing to do, if the kids are doing it. Them's just my sentiments exactly. Well, as I was saying, I can look right in their sitting room in the evenings, and up to a week ago, there wasn't an evening place for Ed Ferguson. Wouldn't sit in that big leather chair and read and smoke his pipe. Then starting last Wednesday, this is Tuesday, yes, last Wednesday, he didn't sit in that leather chair. Or for land's sake. I sit there and I sit there, time possibly dizzy, watching and watching, and he did not sit in that leather chair. What in the world? Maybe he was sick. I thought that too. Then I was watching the next morning, and he goes out to work. And you know, Miss Hanson, he ain't sitting in that leather chair or not since. Well, I never heard of such a thing. Is Henrietta? Yes, she's there knitting and talking and amending, just like always in the evenings. And you know, Miss Hanson, of course, I'm just supposing, and I wouldn't want it for the world to get around to Henrietta that I said anything, but I got a suspicion that they're mad at each other, and he goes and sits in another room. Hmm. Well, this is a free country, and he can sit where he pleases, but it does look funny. Well, I got a roast in the oven. I thought I'd let you know. Do please let me know if you find out anything more. I wish my latest... Curtains had bigger holes in them. I'm getting possibly cross-eyed squinting through that lace. I reckon you're through with this magazine. After you get your hands on a magazine, I have to be. Well, if you're going to be so snippy about it, I won't take it. When I get the roast out of the oven, I'm going to bake some cookies. I'll send some over. If they're as tough as the last ones you sent, I don't want any. Old busybody. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's you, Sylvia. I thought somebody would come in. I wish my neighbors have enough politeness to not stand and scare me to death all the time. I thought that cross with you and Tilda Mingle was here. I seen her cross in the backyard. She just went home. Isn't she just the nosiest old thing you can imagine? She's just awful. Ma, I wish I'd got here sooner. She's always finding out the most interesting things. Did she know what to, did she know anything new? Did she? Promise not to tell a soul, Sylvia. Why, Miss Ants, you've known me long enough to know that when I'm told something, it don't go no further. Yes, well, it's about the Ferguson's next door to Matilda Mingles. They've had a quarrel. No. Yes. Well, I ain't a bit surprised. Yes, they've quarreled since last Wednesday, she. Oh, there's a grocery boy. Just a minute, Sylvia. Slugberry. Morning, Miss Lockhart. Miss An Miss Anson's out talking to the grocery boy. She shut the door, so I think he wants his money and she can't pay him. How do you like a new house since you moved in? Oh, it's just grand. When I get everything just so, 
I'm gonna invite the whole neighborhood in. Miss Lockhart built it just the way I wanted it. Don't you think he's just about the nicest husband in the world? Oh, well, maybe some men are all right, but as for me, well, you know what I think of men. I guess it's mutual. And now look at the Fergusons. What about them? Haven't you heard? Oh, they've been having some terrible thoughts. Wow, did you know Miss Anson told uh, Miss Anson told me? You won't let her go no further if I tell you. I certainly will not. If there's anything I respect, it's a secret. Mr. Lockhart always said I could keep a secret better than ever than any woman he ever saw. What did Mrs. Anson tell you? Well, Miss Anson told me that Miss Lingle told her that every night since last Wednesday, Ed Ferguson and Henrietta has had a fight. They were screaming and yelling and awful carrying on and who was that going to my house? Oh, it's that salesman again. What's been trying to sell me your organ? Tell Miss Anson I'll be back again. Well, good morning, Miss Lockhart. Real Sylvia. She saw a man and run out. Don't tell me she run towards him. <laughs> I thought you were so busy getting your new house fixed up. Oh, well, there isn't so much fix up. Everything's brand new when the furniture man just brought in the stuff and put it where I wanted it. Sit down. Isn't it just awful to have people right in our own neighborhood fighting and keeping the neighbors awake on nights like... Ferguson's. Come around in, Mrs. Nutterbud. Morning, Nancy. Don't you think our new house is just too beautiful for words? Kind of surprised everybody when we built it, I guess. Oh, I don't know. When I seen them home lumber there and cementing things, I smell the mouse. I bet you're wondering what I came in this morning for. Oh, yes. What is you coming for this morning, Nancy? Well, I don't want to borrow anything. At least, I can't think of anything right now. But maybe I will before I go. No. I just seen too many of the neighbors calling on you this morning. I sort of smelled a mouse. Is something happened? Haven't, Haven't you heard? heard? Heard what? About the Fergusons. About how Ed almost killed Henrietta. Oh, my land of Goshen. Yes, they say it's how he'd been drinking. Why, do you know, when I seen him dri driving his car the other day, it did look like he was going very straight, and right away, I smelled a mouse. He always did look like a man that would drink. Good. Good morning. For pity's sake, Prunes Pinchbit, what's ailing of you? I, I was up in the attic and I found this. Why, wasn't the picture of that Morgan boy we know 20 years ago? Uh-huh. He was such a nice boy. He was almost married once. He was engaged and everything. Well, you really and truly engaged, Prudence. Uh-huh, but he, he went to New York and he was took by a vampire woman. And ever since, my heart's been broke. <laughs> why, I never before knew why he didn't never get married, but I always smelled a mouse. It appears to me, Mrs. Nottabud, you have a one-track nose. I would never shed no tears over a man that wasn't true to me. But I, I love him. Yes, and I love toasted cheese sandwiches, but I'm never happy after I eat them. But Miss Anson, he wasn't no cheese sandwich. <laughs> Prudence, you just mind what I say. You're a whole lot better off than if you had murdered that Morgan boy. I mean, you might be in the same boat as poor Mrs. Ferguson. Mrs. Ferguson? My stars, Miss Pinchbit. You're not going to say you ain't heard about the Fergusons? How could I? I've been out in the attic all morning. It's the likes of you folks that stay pinned up and don't hear what's going on right in your own neighborhood. It's the likes of Sig Pride, I say. But what about the Fergusons? Why? Ed Ferguson come home the other night going crazy and broke up the furniture. Oh, no. Oh, oh yes. yes. And went after poor Henrietta Ferguson. Why, everybody in the neighborhood heard her yelling and screaming. Well, I'm flabbergasted. Can't we go over there and see her? My stars know Miss Pinchbit. If it comes up in court, we don't want to know a thing about it. For one thing, I don't have no suitable dress to wear in the courtroom. I wish we could see into the house and... We can. What? what? Through my back bedroom window. We look right over to Matilda Mingle's summer kitchen into the Ferguson's house. Come on upstairs. Let's do. I've never seen you upstairs anyway. Oh, wait. I forgot. I ain't made a bed yet. My land, Angeline. You shouldn't care for that. Nobody's upstairs is made up this early in the morning. I guess I can stand it if you can. Delbert Morgan told me when he was going to get married, he was going to build me a bungalow, but... Will you please shut about what happened 20 years ago? But it seems like yesterday.
yesterday. <laughs> if yesterday, 20 years ago, seemed like yesterday, then yesterday must seem like the day you was born. Come on upstairs. Well, Susanna, looks as if the butler failed to announce us. Maybe he did, and that's why there ain't nobody here. Guess we'll just have to turn to the phonograph. No! May I wouldn't do that. Maybe Miss Hanson is asleep. Maybe she is, but I'm just crazy about phonographs. I've been trying to get Jed to buy me one ever since we got married. <gasps> ever since you got married? How long has that been? Just a week today. How long you been married, Miss Claypool? A whole year. Ooh, and you and him still friends? Friends? We're still sweethearts. I love him now than I did a year ago. Ain't that just too monotonous? Me and Jed already had a fight. Why, Susie Ann Cutterman, married only a week and fighting? What about? Upsetting the salt shaker the other morning. Upset the salt shaker. And I says to Jed, says I, upsetting the salt shaker is a sure sign we're going to have a fight. And he says, ain't nothing like a son like that. And we just keep assassin a back and forth till he gets awful mad and throws a biscuit I just baked on the floor and hit the cat and knocked the cat unconscious. So I throw the cat at him and just as the cat hit him, the cat came to and dug his claws into Judd's face to hold on. And now he says he's gonna sue me for category or something. There's someone downstairs. There she Come comes. Oh, well, look who's here. Good morning, ladies. Clara, won't you and Susie Anna see right down until we get back? We want to see if there's blood sweet on Ferguson's front porch. Come, girls. Blood? We'll be right back. Prudence, what does she mean about the Fergusons? You don't really mean. You don't really mean you ain't heard about the Fergusons? Got a baby. Please, Miss Pinchbit, don't keep us in suspense. That's right. Don't keep us in suspenders. What about the Fergusons? Come think of it. Maybe I better not say. Well, if you cross your heart and hope to die, you promise you won't tell? I do. Ed Ferguson got mad drunk and hit Miss Ferguson over the head with a meat grinder. Prudence, what are you saying? And it fractured Henrietta's skull, so the doctor had to take more than 20 stitches in it. But Prudence, a doctor can't sew up a skull. Oh my. I don't know, maybe he nailed it together? Anyway. She's got a confound fracture. She ain't expected to live. Prudence Pinchbit, are you sure? Are you positive? Didn't Miss Anson tell Miss Mingle? And didn't Miss Mingle tell Miss Lockhart? And didn't Lula Lockhart tell me? Well, I'm gonna go see if there's anything I can do for Miss Ferguson. Oh no, don't go. Mr. Ferguson is still mad crazy and he'll shoot anybody with a loaded <gasps> gun. What goes there? And just think. I've been married to Judd a whole week, and I ain't got no fractions in my head. Quick, get inside before we get seen. What's going on? There's a truck backing up in front of the Fergusons, and we was wondering if they are going to haul Ed away. You know, he's awful crazy. Now you girls stay back, and now to the beacon. Don't crowd me. I'm just out on these curtains. Every time a truck backs up to a house, I smell a mouse. Isn't that just a catch thing to do? <laughs> Are they carrying them out? Not yet. Wait a minute. They're going to unload something. It's a big box. <gasps> it's a coffin. <gasps> I got the sour milk for no soda. What's the matter? Can you see that truck with Ferguson's? No, I've been in They the just kitchen. took a coffin of the Ferguson's. <gasps> Excuse me if I faint. I always do. Then that means she died. Oh, poor Miss Ferguson. I thought I told you I smelled mouse. Do you suppose it's a coffin? <gasps> Miss, oh, look over it! Oh, 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 there are too many heads in the way! Let me see! Oh, poor woman! Poor woman! Oh, girl! <gasps> Thank the good Lord! Oh, girls, I do want you to come over and see what the men are unloading. you never guess. What is it? It's a beautiful cedar chest. Ed brought it for me for my birthday. Isn't he darling? Just Hi. lovely. Hi. I always said it was a model husband. And he never guessed what it's doing for me. No, what? He's been working like a fiend all week down in the basement. Oh, has he? And he never guessed what it's doing. Making me the dearest little nest of tables you ever, ever saw. Come on over and see them. I'm excited to death. Come here. Come here. I 
said from the minute those two were married that... Come on, Nancy. Maybe you can sell another mouse. 